All right, I think we're recording. Um, I wanted to put together for you guys a solution to one of the problems from 11-4, all about the roots of complex numbers. Uh, you can see here's the entire assignment. I wanted to choose a problem that encompassed all these ideas. That is, I want to write, choose a problem that in which you know you kind of have to show writing the complex number in polar form, um, where we can make this conversion from polar form back to complex form. Um, finding the multiplication and the division. And I settled on just doing the last problem on the homework, that is number 35, finding the sixth roots of um, the sixth roots of negative one. Uh, I want to take a second just to describe what is it, what is it that we're actually talking about? What is it that, that, that this means? What are, what are we doing here? And by taking the sixth roots of negative one, what we're literally doing here is we are taking the sixth root of negative one. That's what we're doing. Now, I've explained like in middle school, like this wouldn't have made any sense to you. Well, one, I don't know if you knew to take the sixth roots of things, but even like in algebra one, for example, this wouldn't have made any sense because taking an even root of a, of a negative number, there, there's no real numbers. There's no numbers in the, in the set of real numbers that satisfies this, that we can do this arithmetic for. But then in Algebra 2, you learned about complex and imaginary numbers. And you know that something's going on with this. But I don't know if you've ever took the sixth root of negative 1. You might have taken the square root of negative 1, and you knew that was i. But the sixth root, uh-uh. We didn't know how to make sense of that. And if I can kind of link it to your work with functions, if we said that the sixth root of negative 1 was equal to x, and we multiply both sides by, or raise both sides to the sixth power, then what we're talking about here in adding one, then what we're talking about here is a polynomial. We can think of this as a function. And we can think of this as a polynomial. We're thinking, what are the roots of this number? What are the roots of x to the sixth power plus one? We know it's some sort of polynomial shifted up one unit. But, I mean, in Algebra 2, this, I, I don't think you would have been getting anything. Like, this is just kind of too complex. You don't know what to do with this. You don't know how to factor it. You don't know how to use the rational roots. don't know how to use the quadratic formula. So, this, at this point, you really wouldn't have had the tools in Algebra 2 in order to do an, uh, a problem like this, finding the roots of this function. And that's equivalent to finding the sixth roots of negative 1. But now we do. Now we do, and so I want to draw a line underneath this because that's kind of the background context as to what the problem is that we're trying to solve, what we're trying to think about here. Okay, so if we want to go back and solve this, or solve, if we want to go back and evaluate this earlier expression, finding the sixth roots of negative one, we now know that it's very helpful to take this from the Cartesian form. So the Cartesian, or maybe I'll even put, um, the rectangular form, because believe it or not, but Descartes didn't have any idea about imaginary numbers yet. So the rectangular form, rectangular form uh, for negative one would be negative one plus zero i. Here's how you'd write out the complex number negative one in, in, in rectangular form, negative one plus zero i. And that makes a lot of sense because it's negative one for the real number axis and, and zero for the imaginary axis. If we had to put this, if we had to plot this point, then this is our imaginary and this is our real axis. Where would this point negative one plus zero i go? Well, it's negative one on the real axis and zero on the imaginary axis. So this point would be plotted here on the imaginary plane. Okay, so let's get back to our job of finding the sixth roots of this number. Well, if this is our complex number, what we can do is convert this to polar form. And with polar form, you will recall that uh, z squared, if this is a, and this is B, A plus B I is that complex rectangular form, then you know that um, Z squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, because we can make a right triangle of any number in the, in the imaginary plane, and you also know that tangent of theta is equal to B over A, that is the vertical height over the adjacent height. Those two formulas should look familiar to you. 
But I really encourage you not even to use the formulas, but instead just look at the picture and see if you can not turn this into polar form just by looking at the picture. And the idea here is to make a complex number in imaginary or in polar form, so of the form r, which is the radius, cosine of theta, the angle of rotation, plus i sine, the angle of rotation. Well, if this is the point here, and we draw kind of the polar circle, the, you know, in, in polar grid, there's always concentric circles. What's the radius from the center of the circle to that point? Well, that radius is just one. That radius is just one. What is the angle of rotation in order to get to that point? Well, that's not too hard to see either. We can just see that that's just pi. And that's it. We've written the uh, we've written the uh, complex number in um, rectangular form, or in standard form, or Cartesian form. There's a lot of names for this. We've written it in polar form. We pretty much did what, exactly what all these questions are asking, and we did so visually. For these, you might use these formulas um, in case that these aren't familiar. Like if this isn't, if this, if these aren't familiar angles, if these aren't familiar thetas of rotation, then you might need to use these formulas. But we didn't need to do so with with this particular case right here. We could actually just kind of see it quite easily. It's actually better to just kind of look at it and make sense of it from what we know. Okay, I'm going to put change my color now to a different color just to indicate, hey, we're we're moving into a different phase of this problem. So we found our imagine our complex number in polar form and now we want to find the sixth roots of this and that is the equivalent that's the same as raising our number to the one-sixth so de Moivre's theorem will tell us how to apply this one-sixth to our to our polar form so de Moivre's theorem tells us how to treat this and we sort of and quite prove it, but we worked through a few uh, worked through, through a few samples in class, and we saw a pattern picking up. So that's where we're getting this this theorem from. There's a more rigorous proof, maybe in the back of the book. I can't remember, but that was that was good for just seeing the pattern. What we know is when we raise z, the complex number to the one sixth, we raise r to the one sixth, and then we have the cosine of one sixth times. Oh, geez, we're we're gonna run over. All right, hold on one second. Let me grab this, see if I can't grab this. There we go. Let's see if I can grab this. And, oh, there it is. Let's grab this. Let's see if I can't drag it. Yep, sure can. There it goes. Okay. All right. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, we're back in business. Sorry about that interruption. So uh, we are going to use de Moivre's theorem to apply that exponent to our polar form of our complex number. And the way we do so is uh, we know we multiply um, we multiply the angle of rotation by one sixth. But because the one sixth crunches up the angle, what we need to do is we need to think about it not just from the perspective of pi but from the perspective of 2 pi k, because you know that every 2 pi multiple past pi, you're going to be at the same point on the unit circle. So we need to take into consideration lots of different possible solutions here, not just pi, but every 2 pi iteration of pi. We've got to do that both for the sine, for the cosine, and the i sine. So i sine pi plus 2 pi, oh geez, forgot the 1 sixth. 1 sixth of pi plus 2 pi k. So again, close out all these 1, 2, and there's the big one to close the whole thing. All right, and now we know we can get six, six roots, six roots. So there's going to be six different times. Let me just draw a picture just to really reinforce what's going on here. Because we're taking the sixth roots, we know this is a rotation from zero to pi. But because we're taking six roots of this number, 
What this means is that the sixth roots will all be in a 2 pi space. But, but because if when we multiply 1 6 by pi, we're only going to get one of the possible six roots. So we need to consider multiple 2 pi iterations of this point. So that's what we're doing when we do this. That's what we're doing. We're, we're considering all the different 2 pi iterations. And we're understanding those iterations for when there is no 2 pi added on to pi, when there is one 2 pi added on to 2 pi, two, three, four, and five. Now you ask, why did I stop at five? Why didn't I go when k is equal to six, when k is equal to seven? The eighth multiple of two pi beyond pi. Well, we were talking about sixths of negative one. How many, how many solutions should we be finding? By the fundamental theorem of algebra, we should be finding one, two, three, four, five, six. All we need is six solutions. That's all there is. That's all there is. There's six solutions to this. So let's go ahead and start finding these solutions using our de uh, formula, our de theorem formula. Okay, so we know one to the one six is just one. Okay, and here's where I kind of do the math first in here I apply 0 to k so 2 pi times 0 is 0 so what I'm taking in here in the parentheses is just pi so this is going to be the cosine of pi over 6 now when you do that arithmetic once it saves you time because you know it's going to be I sine of the same angle just like this so you know that if we do the calculation for that argument in the space of the cosine, we know that angle for the sine is going to be the same. All right, so now we just got to think back to our unit circle. The cosine of pi over 6, oh, that's root 3 over 2, positive, because we're in the first quadrant. And then sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, so plus 1 half, and that's our imaginary element of this expression, so plus 1 half i. And there's our first solution. That's the first solution when k is equal to zero. That's the first of the six uh, roots for negative one. And now we got to do it again. It gets a little bit repetitive, but you got to get the hang of it. So now we consider when k is equal to one. Okay, when k is equal to one, this is going to be two pi. Two pi plus pi is three pi. So this is three pi, three pi. <coughs> One sixth of three pi, huh? It's three pi over six, or in other words, pi over two plus i sine of pi over two. All right, and now if you if you notice what we're kind of doing now is this stage right here, we're turning a complex number into Cartesian form. So we're kind of getting practice here. If we have this polar form, let's turn this into the Cartesian form, and you just do that by evaluating all the sines and cosines and multiplying through by the radius. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0, plus i sine of pi over 2, well that's just 1, so 1 times i is plus i. And of course we don't need that 0, so we can just do this. So the second root of negative 1, second of the sixth roots of negative 1 is just i. All right, now we do it for two. One times cosine. Now we gotta do a little bit of math in our heads. Two pi times two is four pi, plus pi is five pi. So this is cosine of five pi <coughs> over six, plus i sine of five pi over six. All right, unit circle time. Cosine of five pi over six is negative root three over 2, and sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half, positive, second quadrant, so 1 half i. Keep going. <laughs> and like I said, this gets a little bit tedious. Uh, okay, so we're on the third, so 3 times 2 pi is 6 pi, plus pi is 7 pi, so we have 7 pi over 6, plus i sine of 7 pi, over 6. Cosine of 7 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. 
And then sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half, so minus 1 half pi. All right, and the next one. We've got one, two, three, we have our four roots. We have our four of our, of our six sixth roots of negative one. Four, okay, getting the hang of this. So when k is equal to four, this is eight pi plus pi is nine pi. Nine pi over six is three pi over two. A lot of work with fractions, it's a little annoying, not that bad. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, plus 1 times i sine of 3 pi over 2. Well, it's negative 1i. Like I said, that 0 is not doing anything. So just like it was when k was equal to 1, one of our solutions is negative 1. All right, we're on our last one. Last one, finally. Sixths are a little bit annoying. There's, there's a lot of, a little bit tedious. But if you see a pattern, you can go ahead and use it. You can go ahead and exploit it to your advantage. Uh, so when k is equal to 5, see here, 2 pi times 5 is 10 pi, plus pi is 11 pi, so we're talking about 11 pi over 6, plus i sine of 11 pi over 6. All right, and the cosine 11 pi over 6 is root 3 over 2, and the sine of 11 pi over 6 is in quadrant 4, so it's negative 1 half i. So here are our six solutions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'll just go back to algebra 2 just to pull this all together, and what this is telling us is that if we had a function f of x, and we factored this polynomial, into its sixth roots. What we'd be talking about is x minus, oh geez, this is gonna take a little bit. Am I gonna regret this? Oh, I got an idea. Let's just copy and paste. Let's see if I can do that. <coughs> copy, paste. Yeah, that worked. So we have this one. That's one of our roots. I still think I'm gonna regret this. It's gonna take a while. All right. So minus that solution times x minus, and we go up and grab the next solution, which is just i. Minus i. Close it up. Times x minus, and then you go up and you see the third root, the fourth root, the fifth root, the sixth root. And so by the end of this, you would have all of these six different factors here. Six different factors, six different zeros, six different roots. That's what we're doing right now. We're factoring this into its six complex roots. Sometimes they're not always complex. Sometimes some of the roots are, are, rat, are real numbers, some of them are complex, but in this particular case, and I think you could have seen this at the beginning, all the roots are going to be complex. Okay, last thing for you guys is I want you guys to visualize all these solutions on the complex, um, on the complex plane. So here's our complex polar plane right here. And what I've done, you see the real numbers is on the x-axis, the imaginary numbers is on the vertical axis, and what I have here is all of our solutions plotted out. So for example, this was the solution, the square root of 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. That was that first one there you got when k was equal to 0. So I'm going to plot those six solutions, and what do you notice? They are all on the circle with radius 1, which is exactly what you would have expected. Each of these has a radius of 1. And when you go back and look at what their, their angles of rotation are, pi over 6, pi over 2, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 3 pi over 2, 11 pi over 6, Look where they're at. Pi over 6, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 3 pi over 2, and 11 pi over 6. And then finally, I'm just going to drop the real big hammer down. We'll turn this over to the Cartesian world and we'll see that all these points are the same. This one is root 3 over 2 on the real numbers axis and 1 half on the imaginary axis and so on and so forth. And one of you guys asked a great question, will this always be the case? Will the sixth roots 
of numbers divide the circle with that radius, a radius of 1 in this case, or a radius of 2 or 3, into 6 equal parts? The answer is always yes. The answer is always yes to that. So this is a lot of different work that you guys have done from middle school, from Algebra 1, from Algebra 2, from pre-calculus, all coming together in one topic. Really cool stuff. Uh, I, I hope that helped for an uh, overview explanation of, 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 this, of this concept and helped you to uh, figure out how to do um, arguably the, the last problem in the homework, which is oftentimes the trickiest. There you go.